Hey there, Adam Brewer, Senior Technical Specialist at Microsoft covering security compliance and identity. And welcome back to another installment in my video series, walking through some of those technologies with extemporaneous explanation and demonstration. Today we're talking about device-based conditional access, and that's a mouthful, but what it really means is a method that we allow you to move towards a zero trust security model. Now, zero trust, is definitely a buzzword and has definitely been overused. But what it means to us at Microsoft is that you should never trust a connection and you should always verify it. Unfortunately, that, that's at odds with the way a lot of organizations have operated their security model today. So for the most part, there's been this mindset that we're gonna trust everything that comes from the corporate network. Either you have access to the network through some sort of technical means or physical means, but either way, we trust you because you had to go through some hoops to get there. This ignores the fact that attackers have ways to get on your network as well, and then once they're there, they have free reign because you're going to implicitly trust everything they do. That's obviously bad, and you pair that with the idea that, honestly, just not a lot of people are sitting on corporate networks and, and might not be for some time. We need to move to a model that moves beyond corporate network. And so device-based conditional access is one of the ways to get there, as opposed to making all the traffic come through your VPN or your corporate network or blah, 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 gross stuff like that. We're instead just gonna look at the device itself. And we've got two different ways to do it. One that's a little bit easier to get started, but might not have as much security control. And then one that might require a little more effort to get going, but once you do, is gonna be a much stronger security control. So let's talk about both. The first one is hybrid Azure AD join. And you know what? It's going to be a lot easier if I show you a slide real quick. So let's do that. So here I have a diagram showing a traditional organization uh, connected to Office 365 and Azure AD. So we see at the bottom half, they're on-premises, Active Directory, and traditional domain join devices. And then in the top half, we see our cloud services with Azure AD and Office 365. So what we want to do is take that traditional domain join device that you see there on the right, and we want to make Azure AD aware of it. So the way we do that is we have a hybrid Azure AD join device. And that incorporates the traditional domain join that we've done for 20 years with Active Directory, but then also a process that's quite similar to Azure AD registration, where we make that device known to Azure AD. The benefit of this is that when the device shows up at our front door and says, hey, I want to get access to email, we know that device and we can say, oh, you come from Bruco. Okay, come on in. So the benefits to organizations, A, this doesn't require you to really change the way you domain join devices. It's, it's additive. B, it's really easy to do. For Windows 10 devices, it's as simple as deploying a GPO. And that's pretty much it. The devices become hybrid joined and then they become known. Now, the downsides, of course, are A, it's, it's Windows only, and B, that there's no ongoing attestation. We, we want, rely on you and your organization to ensure that device is in a healthy state. We're not doing any inspection from that perspective. It's really just, is the device hybrid joined? Then come on in. Okay, now let's clear away that slide and let's talk about the other model. The other model is that a device is managed through some sort of modern management means that could be Intune, that could be Microsoft Endpoint Manager, that could be on a Macintosh or iOS device, Jamf. And the device is managed and it has a, a compliance policy applied to it and we validated that it has met all those compliance controls you've put in place. Now these could be things like password, uh, other things related to encryption or device health. These can even incorporate threat level from threat solutions like Microsoft Defender ATP. So let's take a look how all the pieces fit together here in the admin consoles. So here I have my device-based conditional access policy, and it's a real simple one, but let's walk through it together. So this is part of Azure Active Directory, and I'm gonna start by targeting just my sales and marketing team to pilot it. Remember that Azure AD, I can build out my, my conditional access policies over time to incorporate more and more of my organization. And I'm gonna start by targeting three applications both first and third party, salesforce.com, box.com, as well as the entire Office 365 service. Now, what I'm gonna do for somebody in my sales and marketing group that wants to gain access to those applications is I'm going to set one of two controls as being required. So either the device is marked as compliant, that's that model that works across Mac OS, iOS, Android, and Windows 10, or it's hybrid Azure AD joined. 
And then I'm going to click the radio button that says require one of these selected controls. So if either of them is true, you're going to get in. So now let's go over and look at a compliance policy in Microsoft Endpoint Manager. This is my compliance policy for Windows 10 devices. This is that modern management capability I talked about. So here's where I could look for different password settings, device encryption, different device health controls. But I'm going to do just a simple one. I'm going to look for secure boot. And then I'm also going to make sure the device's threat level is medium or lower from Microsoft Defender ATP. Whoa, okay, that's interesting. And that's right. We can jump over to Microsoft Defender ATP here, and here I have the device I'm going to demonstrate in just a moment. And notice that the risk level is none. So Defender ATP sets a real-time risk level based on the activity on the device. If there's malware on it, of course the risk level is going to go up. Now, if that risk level gets too high, obviously it's, it's above medium in the case of my compliance policy here, the device is going to become non-compliant and Azure AD is going to kick it out of anything it had access to. So it's going to say, whoa, buddy, no email for you right now until we get that device health under control. You're not compliant right now. And you're not compliant because your threat level is too high. That is super powerful using that ongoing attestation to make those access decisions. So let me show you what this looks like in action when I have a device that's not part of my organization. So the grandma's PC scenario, as we always talk about, or in this case, grandma's Macintosh, because that's what I'm on right now. So I'm going to try to sign in here with this demo user, and I'm going to get my great passwordless experience. So I'm going to tap 40 on my iPhone. I'm going to do my touch ID or face ID, and I'm signed in in just a moment. But notice that I get a message that says, hey, you know, your sign-in was successful. You can get in, um, but we require your device to be managed by Bruco in order to get to this resource. And then helpfully, there's even a big blue Enroll Now button that will kick me over to Microsoft Intune and help me get my Macintosh enrolled in Intune. So then I can get to what I need. So we're not even saying just, nope, sorry. We're saying no, but here's how you can get there. Super powerful. So let's jump over to my Windows 10 PC and let me show you the experience when I'm successfully managed and successfully compliant. We're here on my Surface Pro 4 running Windows 10. And let's first jump into the settings and we can see that this device is managed by Bruco. So it's managed by Microsoft Endpoint Manager and it is also protected by Microsoft Defender ATP, which you saw when I showed you the admin console and that the device's threat level was non-existent. So let's fire up Microsoft Edge like a user would do on a regular basis. And we're going to get that seamless single sign-on experience where I'm brought directly into my Outlook email. No prompts, no pop-ups, no anything. Just get right to work. Or what about my OneDrive? It's right there too, signed in and ready to go. This is what we're talking about when we talk about device-based conditional access. There is no experience. For the users who are on their company managed devices, it just works as expected. That's a great user experience and also secure for your organization because you saw what happened with the unmanaged device, they couldn't get in. So you learned about device-based conditional access today. You saw two different methods, hybrid Azure AD join that works on Windows 10 devices and Windows down level devices. And then you also saw modern management with compliance checking that's supported across Mac OS, iOS, Android, and Windows 10. And that's looking for a device that is managed and compliant and must stay compliant to continue to receive access to those company resources. So hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you learned something today. As always, please like and share. If you liked what you see, give me a comment below on what you'd like to see next. And I will see you next week. Thanks so much for watching.